I built an aluminum divider between the engine and the people in the car primarily to keep the people safe when the engine catches fire. I spent a lot of time overly obsessing about this because that's what I do. Also, I knew going in it was going to take a lot of time and effort and I wanted to make sure the proverbial juice was worth the squeeze. You could call it an engine cover or maybe a rear seat delete, but I call it a firewall. Like all projects, the first thing we need to do is fix the start and ending points. In this case, where the sheet metal meets the car. This isn't the glorious part. It's not fun and sexy because the amount of work put into it is hardly even seen. But bear with me, the fun part comes later. You're looking at the semi-removable baseboard and those clippy clip things are called clecos. They are used to temporarily hold things in place while further mounting holes are drilled. They keep everything lined up as you go. Measure, mark, and center punch the mounting holes. I use a metal hole punch for this work. It has a little point that lines up with the center punch divots and unlike a drill bit, doesn't leave any burrs to clean up. A large diameter sanding drum helps with inside radiuses and I use various deburring tools. For the quarter panels, I use a type of sheet metal screw and this tool is used to start the threads. When making templates, it's usually easier to tape smaller pieces together to make complex shapes. A band saw isn't necessary, but it sure speeds up the process. This is 5052 aluminum and it usually comes with a protective white film on it. Here 90 thousandths aluminum is used and it's a bit too thick for the hole punch so all of this deburring has to take place. The point of this last exercise was to have the piece neatly roll over the baseboard. Netserts are used to create threads in sheet metal and are used extensively throughout this project. They come in different flavors. This particular model is flush mounted and leaves no lip. I dusted off my slip roller to use on this project to create the gentle bends. I bought a TIG welder in 2006 and taught myself how to use it. A few thousand hours later, it's pretty much second nature. Sometimes the best tool to use is your hands. This piece of bent flat bar is used as the gauge to know how much to bend. The aluminum angle bar has been notched where the bends occur. The notches weaken the integrity, but once all the structure is put together, it's solid. To determine where the side supports go, I used a sharpened tungsten taped to an angle bar and scribed a line. I used 1024 screws. They may be a little overkill, but 832 screws are too fine and take forever to screw in, and ain't nobody got time.
I didn't have it figured out how to navigate around the tight fit of the turbo and roll bar until the last minute. I conjured up all sorts of complicated ways, but in the end, I just kept it simple and made a pyramid structure. The pyramid was designed to use only three pieces, carefully bent and welded together, and then later all sanded down so it looks like one piece. This is another gauge to determine how much to bend. Of course, this could have been whipped up in CAD and laser cut. But not only do I not speak the CAD language, it's just faster for me to use a paper template and a saw. Yeah, the welds aren't a thing of beauty, but no worries. It's all being sanded down. At least a visible part. The project is getting more funner with the introduction of a bead roller. Its purpose is to add another dimension to the sheet metal, which adds rigidity. It also looks prettier. In this case, I'm adding a step roll. It's easier to bead roll a flat piece of metal and then add the roll bend. Bead rolling isn't particularly difficult to do. I imagine it's kind of like using a sewing machine, though I wouldn't know. The main thing is it doesn't care how fast you go, so just go slow. These clips are ridiculously sped up in editing. I only need a small flange to attach the pyramid to the panel, so the flange was trimmed down. Who likes coffee? I love coffee. It's time for a coffee break. I always get comments about what this accordion looking tool is. Well, I think its official name is a rivet spacer and it saves time when marking evenly spaced holes. I'll drop a link in the description. I think the point of this clip is to show the little piece of wood I used to keep from marring the panel on eject. I used poster board under the panel to keep from scratching it while it's sawed. I'll just drop some silicone here to help keep out the fire smoke. The pyramid is attached to the panel with 8th inch solid rivets. I'll explain a little later with better video. When starting a bead roll in the middle of something, I start moving slowly while I'm cranking down on the tension so as not to leave an obvious starting point. I usually do more than one pass, cranking down the tension a little more on each pass. This tends to leave the panel with less distortion. The focus is terrible here, but I sharpie the part of the unibit where I want to stop so I don't blow through and ruin the piece. I made a template for determining the correct spacing for the quarter turn fastener springs. This is how I make rivet heads flush in sheet metal.
Using a shallow 22 degree countersink, I can make the rivet head flush in eighth inch thick aluminum. This is the first time I've used this sander for sanding glass. I didn't know what to expect. I put so much effort into installing a mid-engine sideways into a Corvair that I figure people need to see it. So I present you with a window above the engine. It's like a poor man's Ferrari. The glass is laminated to help with soundproofing. I have no idea how much heat it will take. Straight lines are easy by just looking straight down the line. Always push your material into the dies. Curves are a bit more tricky. I find that if I get up on top and look at exactly where the two dies meet, I can better navigate the smooth turns. Back off the tension while still moving at the end. Try not to overbend the roll bend. It's hard to straighten out, believe it or not. I'm gonna try some bead roll art by bead rolling the Corvair script where I got an image from a search online. I use a projector to project the image from the laptop onto a piece of metal and then from there I trace the image with a sharpie. I have no idea how this is gonna work out. But you never know unless you try, right? Okay, here goes nothing. As you can see, you don't want to work with a big piece of metal because you got to whip it around a lot. It's not too bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad for an amateur. I made uh, four passes on this, I think, each time increasing the tension a little bit. The dot over the eye couldn't cleanly be done with a bead roller, so this is how I made it using the wife's ball punch. <clears throat> Taping a nut to the female side, I poked a hole so I could align it with the dot. Oof, a hair too hard. Yeah, I did a few practices. Each one took about two hours. Back to the buck rivets. I use a quick burst to set the rivet. The pressure set at 40 pounds. What I wanted to say is that it really is easy to overmash the rivets. Don't get too carried away. It takes less than you think.
There are about 50 quarter turn fasteners in this project. Don't bother with aluminum fasteners unless you are a full on racer. They get mangled easy and have a lot more stiction, making them hard to install and remove. So you're not gonna believe this. After all that work, I made a plain panel because I don't know if I like the script in there. It looks like I'm trying too hard. It looks like a license plate. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I figure I'll paint them both because maybe after they're painted, I'll like the script panel more. 